Hi guys, welcome to Making Sawdust. I'm Kevin and thank you for joining me. Today we have a box of goodies that I paid $30 for at a garage sale recently. There are 10 really useful items in this box along with a bonus 11th item that may surprise you that still works. You guys know I love garage sales and the first thing that caught my eye was this table saw taper jig. It's a very simple jig. You guys have seen these on Amazon and all other sorts of places. These are available commercially. Uh, they're actually not the safest jig in the world. I have a few ideas on how I'm going to make this a little better by actually first attaching it to a piece of melamine or MDF. That's going to first make this jig a little better so stay tuned for a video from that. Next up, we have a Black & Decker Deluxe Router Guide. This actually caught my eye. Uh, I have a router guide for my Montgomery Ward Powercraft router. And this is quite similar. The aluminum bars um, is really helpful to adjust for a circle cutting jig. I notice there's a micro adjust on this also. There's a few other accessories that are in the box itself like some collars and uh, I'm gonna have to read through and find out all the functions of this guy but there's modern equivalents on the market today guys that are probably quite functional just like this I'm gonna learn a little bit about this and share my experience guys you know I love garage sale stuff jigs and fixtures and extra screws and router plates and you name it, I like that stuff. One of the reasons I love garage sales is you usually have a miscellaneous box somewhere with one price on it. And when I go to a garage sale, I'll usually start picking up the individual items that are on the tables and things like that. I find a box that has a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like this one and try and get a package deal like I paid $30 for this entire box and I'm looking at this DeWalt slash Black & Decker drum sander accessory it's pretty interesting I've never seen one like it I'm not sure if it goes on a drill press as a threaded end on it now I do notice Black & Decker and DeWalt was kind of changing over at the same time period back in now probably around the 70s so maybe this is a part for a radial arm saw possibly uh, let me know in the comments what you guys think and I'll also do a little bit of research but I will certainly use this thing and show you guys This was another interesting little item in this box. It's called a return device. Again, Black & Decker branded. And the neat thing about this particular sale is a lot of these accessories had information booklets with them. So props to the owner of these tools. He saved all the information, much like my dad did, much like he taught me how to do. So I have a good file folder full of uh, informational booklets and things for tools so I'm still kind of looking at this and I'm like an automatic return why the heck what would I need an automatic return now this is like a super key return and now I know exactly what it's for this is really for a radial arm saw so that also rings a bell now that Black and & Decker and DeWalt radial arm saws are kind of co-branded around the 60s, 70s, I think. Uh, but I've also seen Black & Decker radial arm saws and just DeWalt radial arm saws. Much like this Black & Decker horse and a half router. Quite similar to a Craftsman router. And I think there was a lot of brand changeover or maybe brand alliance back in the 70s and 80s. So... It's an interesting design. It has almost a, uh, I wouldn't say that, rack and pinion maybe type adjustment. It's pretty sticky here. I'm trying to figure out how exactly I'm getting this to move. Notice there's some dial. There's a dial with some 
graduations on it, so maybe that's helpful for a micro adjust. Similar to kind of a plunge router, but uh, certainly not a plunge router. I'll go through this router and clean it all up, refurb it, and we are going to plug this thing in here in a minute. It works and it sounds good, so that is router number six, I think. Maybe router number five. Yeah, that's router number five in my shop. And a big old Allen wrench. And a seven inch dado. This is an Oldham brand blade. This is one of those wobble dados. I've never used one. Never set one up, but I do have a couple table saws. And I want to be able to have a dado blade in one of those table saws, or possibly Frank, the classic Craftsman radial arm saw. This appears to be another radial arm saw part. This is actually anti-kickback pawls. So... I would say it's probably branded for a DeWalt or a Black & Decker radial arm saw. That's probably a blade wrench that might fit something I have. Again, the joys of a miscellaneous box. Here we have a Vermont American dovetail jig or dovetail template. Along with a self-centering dowel jig. Which is accessories there, some extra sleeves, obviously different size sleeves I believe. I never used a self-centering doweling jig. I'm not entirely sure what these parts are, but by the way they look, uh, branded on the bag something different, but the way they look, as you would insert those, they have a tiny little point on them. Let me know in the comments exactly what these guys are called. But I believe that would be locating pins for certain size dowels so you could transfer your mark to another piece of material. Again, some literature, which is always helpful. And here we go, guys. Some classic Harbor Freight. I'd like to know how old this is and uh, proves that Harbor Freight stuff is still around. It actually doesn't even look used. I'm going to be 50 years old, so literature was always in my dad's shop. Most of it was mechanic literature, but I am starting to collect woodworking literature, and it's a great reference. So I've already noticed a few things in this book that's going to be super helpful for here in the shop. I've also found the router literature and... a 20-year-old... Harbor Freight, or well, Chicago Electric quarter inch trim router, guys. The accessories are nearly identical to the new Avid Power trim router I bought here a few months back. This particular attachment is a roller guide. I've still yet to use a roller guide, I haven't had the application to yet. Here is a edge guide 
nearly identical, same stamping and everything to my Avid Power Kit. Probably very similar to all of your small quarter inch trim routers, guys. But I'm glad I have an extra set of wrenches now. Those are super helpful. And even a spare set of brushes for that router. And here is the bonus 11th item, the Chicago Electric quarter inch trim router. Looking on the manual, the printing date on the manual is 2000. So this thing's 20 years old. I'm most interested actually in the clear base. This would come in so handy if it is the same size or fits my Avid Power router. Because freehand routing, you really want to be able to see you have the most visibility for freehand routing. You want to be able to see where your router bit is cutting. And one thing on these newer trim routers, it's a cast base and it limits the visibility incredibly. A little tight maybe some adjustment on that base or some straight-up modification but let's see if the router actually works guys maybe we will have this nice orange router our freehand trim router Billy Joe is doing an awesome job doing some freehand signs now so we are going to be sharing all that content pretty soon on Making Sawdust. And if you didn't know, her channel is called Hope This Works. So she shares a little bit of woodworking and her perspective of woodworking over there. So make sure you guys stop over there. Lo and behold, that thing works. It sounds good. It sounds smooth. It's not vibrating. It's not screaming. So I think we're going to put this guy into service, and I would actually officially mark my sixth router in the shop. Leave me a comment, guys, on how many routers you guys have in your shop. And if you are a garage sailor and you love picking up maybe old literature, old jigs, saw blades that have never been used maybe let me know if you're a harbor freight fan or even a classic harbor freight tool fan there's a chance that a lot of these items are going to be in future videos but for now i have to pack these away guys in the very near future i will be sharing the future plans of the making sawdust workshop and you're not going to want to miss the next video so make sure you're subscribed and you have your notification bell clicked for all notifications and you folks the ones that are here all the way to the end are the rock stars that are supporting this channel guys get out in your shop and start making some sawdust <laughs>